Hey there fellow sea glass lovers, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Jackie and this is part 9 in my Lighthouse Workshop series. If you want to see any of the other videos, just go to my playlist, Lighthouse Workshop. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create shapes. Now shapes tend to be the focal point of your design, so they are quite important. And I really like to start with shapes and then I build the rest of my design around the shape. So shapes today. And I'm going to give you a number of tips on how you can be quite effective in creating your shapes, just to make sure they're right so that when you stand back and look at your finished piece, the shapes really stand out and are effective in your design. So let's get started. So today I'm going to show you how to create this sailboat. So I want to use my sea treasures and my sea glass to create a nice brown boat and white pottery to create these beautiful white sails. So I'm going to show you how you follow along those lines and create a beautiful sailboat. So the first thing I want to do, I took a bunch of my white pottery and I spread it out in a board. This is really important because you want to be able to find just the right size and shape to fit in to your pattern and follow along those lines. So I like to start my shapes in a corner and what I do is I look at the line and I find a piece of sea glass that lines up really good in the corner. So I'm looking for a piece with the, just the right angle. And then I'm going to try and fill in pieces that kind of go along with that shape. Now as I'm going, and then I've got the pointy line over here. Now you'll notice here that the line of my pattern goes like this, but my purple flag goes beyond that. And I don't want to change my flag. I'm really happy with it. So I'm just going to picture the line being like this. You could take your pattern off and redraw it, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go like this, and I know that's going to line up there. And I need, I think I need a piece here on an angle. So I think I will start to, that's enough to put in place to start to glue. Just put a few in place and then start to glue. You don't want to do the whole shape before you start to glue, because if you do, you might find that where you've put things is starting to shift out of place. So see I'm putting some glue on the back, attaching it. So I'll glue these in place. And remember when you're using the quick seal adhesive caulk, it takes quite a long time to dry. So it's going to give me time to shift things around, make sure they line up just right. Now I'm, you might notice I am leaving a little bit of space around each piece of sea glass. I don't like my pieces of sea glass touching. See these pieces with the paint on them? The paint is on the back and it looks painted, but then when you flip it over, it looks more like a blue piece of sea glass. See the green? because the shade of the paint is shining through the white piece of sea glass and you can still see the frosty bit on top. So I'm quite happy with my pride flag and then using the white pottery really makes that color come to life. Having an interesting day here today, there's a bald eagle sitting on the telephone pole outside my cottage here. And the crows don't like it when the bald eagles try to go after their food. So we have the bald eagles bomb diving, or sorry, the, the crows are diving after the eagles trying to get them to stay away from their food. It's hilarious. That's, that's what you're hearing, if you can hear that squawking in the background. The bird fight. Never-ending entertainment around here with the bird life. And tried to line up a bunch of these. So I'm going to play around to find all the right pieces. And this is where it's really good to have everything laid out on a board 
then I can, it can help me find everything to get just the right shapes that I want. Now when you're doing a shape, when you're trying to create a shape with your sea glass, you want to follow your line. Number one, follow your line. Number two, fill in as much as possible. Don't leave any great big gaps. Like I've got a gap right there. So I'm going to have to find... No, actually I can just move that green piece down and fill in that gap. So here again I have a pointy piece there and I want to find just the right piece that fits into that pointy end. The other thing to think about when you're trying to create a shape is that if you look at a piece like this, it's kind of curved, you're not going to get a straight line if you use a curved piece of sea glass. So look for the sides of your sea glass that are nice and straight. See, there's another piece that's kind of curved. That's fine if you want a curvy line. But think about the line here and try to stick with pieces that are going to give you a straight line and lie straight along that pattern line that you've drawn. So what I often do once I get pieces in place, I want to make sure before I leave it to set because, you know, with the caulking it takes a while to set. So I'm going to take my straight edge and just kind of run it up there so that I know that all the pieces are touching. Just to make sure that all the pieces touch my straight edge so I know they're on a straight line. Same here, I want the bottom of my sail to be nice and straight. So I'll just use the straight edge to line them up a bit. Now I'm also going to use my straight edge. If you remember back to our lesson, I think it was I forget which part it was, but you can check the playlist on the Lighthouse Workshop. And one of the lessons was on drawing your pattern. And I had talked about cutting a piece out of your pattern, putting one above the mullion, one below the mullion. The mullion is this break in the window. You want to, again, at this stage, line up just kind of with your straight edge to make sure that even if your pattern isn't 100% perfect there, you're still lined up properly on both sides because you want that sail, you want it to look like you're looking through your window at the sail. So take your time when you're doing this. It's going to pay off because you want to make sure that in the end it really does look like the shape that you're wanting. There, I think that works. So last tip, before you go away and leave this to set, um, remember about lining up your lines. So I know my straight edge of the sail is here. So I've got to make sure that's lined up. And here. And then this side of the sail curves. So the last thing I'm going to do is take a snapshot. And when you look at something through a snapshot, just grab your phone, Take a little picture, and if it looks good to you, it's okay to leave it to set, because you want it to set before you fill in the green around the edge. So, now I want to do my boat, and I love small browns for a boat. So I just put all of my pottery away, and I dumped out a bunch of my small browns, because I love the small browns, and I'm just going to fiddle around with those until I find all of the right browns to fill in this boat shape. And I, with something like this, I typically start at one end and just work my way to the other. And I will tend to glue as I go. So this is kind of a skinny boat, but you can keep in mind that only part of the boat is showing above the water. The hull of the boat would be underneath the water. The other thing I'm keeping in mind here is that the boat is traveling in this direction and the wind is blowing it this way. I can tell that by the way the sails go. You've got the straight lines of the sails and then you have the, this billowing part where the wind is catching it. So the back part of the boat is going to be bigger than the front pointy part of the boat.
And the last tip or, or the last thing I would point out to you here is that your boat does sit flat in the water but what I've done as I'm picking out pieces for this boat is I've tried to make the top kind of a straight line but I want the bottom to be ripply so I've kind of picked out pieces of sea glass that will give me a little bit of ripple along the bottom because I know that that water is going to be rippling up onto the boat a bit with the movement of the waves. So there I have my sailboat, I have my shape made. So here I've used all of those same strategies to create the shape of the lighthouse and I've put in a few of those mirrored pieces along with some white sea glass and my blue windows and my brown roof, the white light and I used some rocks for the roof there and my flag on top. So the key here is to attach these main shapes before you start to fill in the background. That would be your lesson in this piece. Now the other smaller pieces that you have there, like the smaller sailboats and the birds in the sky, what I do with those smaller ones, I just leave them sitting there and then I attach them as I'm filling in the background. So your homework for this video is to go ahead and attach your sailboat and your lighthouse if you're doing this pattern. If you're doing a different pattern, attach your focal points first. We'll get to the background later. So thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope this was helpful for you. And until next time, happy sea glass hunting. Mm -hmm.